What is exfoliation when it comes to geology? It's going on all around us. Do you recognize it? That's what we're going to talk about. Exfoliation, also known as unloading. Here we go. Exfoliation is a process in which flat or curved sheets of rock fracture and are detached from the rest of the outcrop due to pressure release. Exterior layers start to peel off, that's also known as sheeting, and then erosion and freezing and thawing accelerates the weathering process. The overburdened rock is eroded away, usually granite rock, once exposed to the elements. Under the surface, what we can't see is, is the bedrock, hardened rock, cooled, hardened magma. So it's an intrusive igneous rock. Therefore, granite is usually the most common type. And this process of removing the overlaying rock, it's also called unloading. Precipitation and raindrop impacts add to the detachment of rock particles. And then water can create channels or rills and then hammer away at the stone. But it's not precipitation that's the reason for exfoliation. It's the repeated heating and cooling is what's exerting the stress on these outer layers of the rocks, which causes the layers to start to peel off in thin sheets. The precipitation on these exposed fractures then adds to that breakage. And then during the winter months, there's frost shattering too. The mechanical disintegration of rock from the pressure of water freezing in the pores and along grain boundaries and the water continually seeping into the cracks, freezing and expanding and then eventually breaking the rock apart. So look what's happening to all these rocks here from the below freezing temperatures of the winter time to the 90 and 95 degree summers. They don't stand a chance. It's going to happen. But that's what the process of mechanical weathering is. The pressure, expansion, temperature, freezing and thawing cycles, plant or animal activity. You know, plants can cause root wedging and then animals and insects can tunnel in and around these rocks and also induce further weathering similar to root wedging. And then there's also salt expansion. But that mostly occurs in marine environments where evaporation causes the salt to precipitate out of a rock and then the cracks start expanding from there. So those were examples of physical and mechanical weathering. Now let's also get into chemical weathering. That's when minerals weathering away chemically when they react to air and water and some minerals dissolve while others combine with oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other atmospheric components. Chemical weathering is a dominant process in warm and humid environments. Water, oxygen, and other reactants chemically degrade the mineral components of exposed bedrock and granite, and then also broken down by precipitation until it's washed away. And then some more forces are dissolution and oxidation. Dissolution meaning when rocks and minerals ionic components are disassociated and broken apart and dispersed by water. And then oxidation simply meaning the breakdown of rock by oxygen and water. Other than dissolution and oxidation, we have carbonic acid and hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a chemical reaction when a molecule of water breaks other chemical bonds. And then you have carbonic acid which forms when carbon dioxide, the fifth most abundant gas in our atmosphere, dissolves in water, and this happens naturally in clouds, so precipitation then normally is slightly acidic, so then we have acid rain now too beating down on these rocks. So a great example of chemical weathering is what happens to limestone because of its weak mineral composition. The dissolution and chemical weathering away of limestone leave extensive underground cavern systems. Absolutely stunning. Well, we, we know limestone is one of the softest rock kinds there is, but what about granite, one of the hardest? Well, the answer is yes. Water can eventually, too, even break down granite. And we start with the feldspar, the mineral feldspar. That will turn to clay if exposed to water over long periods of time. So once the feldspar dissolves out, it leaves the rest of the rock very compromised. And then from there, the weathering processes just keep at it.
So we have water erosion and wind erosion. And now think about it, look at this, gravity erosion, right? On these hills, the weight of the rocks, they're all being pulled downhill. Look at all this. And another cool part about exfoliation is spheroidal weathering. Uh, also, it's a process of cracking and splitting off of curved layers from generally a spherical boulder. They're, they're concentric slabs, concentric meaning around a central point. And that's where it sometimes looks like it's a peeling onion. And exfoliation sometimes gets referred to as like a peeling onion. It's just a beautiful display of all these rocks that have been brought up to the surface. That's called exhumation. And it's just been so long, they're now displaying all the obvious signs of exfoliation. These are just perfect examples. And when you think about it too, all these rocks at one point were all underground. They were undergoing massive amounts of pressure. And now that they're out of that, they're in the atmosphere, which is um, uh, one atmospheric pressure, one ATM, is 14.6 pounds per square inch. So that's significantly less pressure. And now the granite is in a rebound. So it starts to expand combined with the thermal conditions. And then the expansion and contraction, the outer layers just simply break away. So cool, good stuff. I'm, I'm just glad I could help explain these geological processes to you and kind of unfold for you what we're looking at instead of just walking right by it. Just great evidence to look at and understand our world. And plus now too, if you're ever on a hike and see this kind of activity, you'll know exactly what's going on and help you to further diagnose the area. And you can share that information to whomever you're with and that might help them to grow their admiration and respect more for nature. And that's what I'm all about, inspiring others to connect to the land and help save and help flourish everything we have and everything we have left. So thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my new subscribers. And I'll see you on the next one.